This is lesson 1.4 and we're going to do some curve sketching today. A uh, review of some stuff from pre-calculus, but also try to incorporate those ideas we've learned so far in calculus to help us sketch some graphs. So what do we need to watch for? Well, you should always be thinking, what's the domain? So the possible values of x. Remember that if there are denominators, you've got to make sure they are not equal to zero, those non-permissible values. If you have square roots, make sure the stuff underneath the square root can't be negative. So a reminder that you might get vertical asymptotes when the denominator equals to zero in reduced form. Remember, you might get those holes or point of discontinuities if there is a factor that is uh, divided out before doing or seeing the reduced function. Um, finding the x-intercepts and y-intercepts, that always helps. Looking at the end behavior, yes, the highest degree terms is all pre-calculus 12 stuff. Remember how we had like degree that were, I think, even with a positive leading coefficient. They always started up here and ended up here, remember that? Even with a negative leading coefficient, started down in quadrant 3, ended in quadrant 4, remember that? And then how about uh, if it was odd, then of course starting in quadrant 3, ending in quadrant 1, if it was a positive leading coefficient. And if it was negative, starting in 2, ending in 4. Remember all that stuff? I hope so. If not, find my videos. Pre-calculus 12, chapter 3. And then, of course, even and odd, vertical asymptotes. That's the stuff we learned in lesson 1.3. So let's quickly look through some examples here. I don't want you want to graph these, but just go through and find me the domain, reduce the function, vertical asymptotes, all that kind of stuff. All right? So we'll take a look at number one. If I'm looking at the domain, ooh, I have a rational function here. Be careful. I should be able to factor the denominator. Anything here that is nice to divide out? Nope. So your domain is really all real numbers, except x can't be 0 or 2. And because nothing simplifies or reduces, therefore x equals to 0 and x equal to 2 are are vertical asymptotes. And by the way, are these asymptotes even or odd? Hopefully you know that they are both odd because it's only degree one. And therefore, let's look at the end behavior here. Well, end behavior is like looking at the highest powers of x in the numerator and denominator. So I'm looking here. If I simplify, that really simplifies to one over x. And this means that as x approaches to infinity, let's see what happens. Well, the y value goes to 0. Same thing at negative infinity. So hopefully I'll say this. As x approaches both positive and negative infinity, the y value gets closer to 0, which is the x-axis. And therefore, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equal to 0. Make sense? All right. Domain, uh, if you said for number two, x cannot be equal to negative three, you are correct. Similarly, now a vertical asymptote at negative three, but this one, just to let you know, is even. Why is it even? Ding, 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 that's right, a degree of two in the denominator for that linear factor. And then in this case, the end behavior, if I take as x approaches to both positive infinity, I think you also get I think positive or negative infinity. And this would be a graph that looks, or not really a, a graph, but I'll say it's like an asymptote. I'll say it's a slanted asymptote. Don't know if you remember doing those before. But it's really like a slanted asymptote of y equals 2x. Why y equals 2x? If I compare this with x squared, 2x cubed over x squared, that's 2x. All right. Okay, number three. Oh, I'd like you to try that. I've actually factored it for you. I'm so nice. And I'm going to ask you to try to find the domain. Once again, the domain is x cannot be equal to 2 or also negative 2. Okay, always look at the domain before you simplify. And this was what that means. h red means the reduced function for h. 
So the reduced function is just x plus 4 over x plus 2. Now, looking at the reduced function, I can find the vertical asymptote. That must be at negative 2. It is odd. And then now I can also find out what happened to that factor that we divided out. That, of course, gives you the whole. The x-coordinate is 2. To find the y-coordinate, I just want you to plug it into the reduced function. 2 plus 4, 2 plus 2, 6 over 4 is 3 over 2. So your whole is at 2 comma 3 over 2. And in this case, if I were to take x approaching to positive negative infinity, you'll see what? While well, comparing the highest powers, x squared over x squared, that gives you 1. So y should approach to the number 1. And therefore, that means I have a horizontal asymptote of y equals to 1. Cool. So this is the preamble, all the things you need to do before you actually go and sketch a curve. If you like a recipe or things of like step one, step two, then here is my curve sketching recipe. Okay, of course, find the domain. Then reduce the function if you can. Find any vertical asymptotes or holes. And then find the x and y intercepts. Look at end behavior. You can check for symmetry. That's even or odd, right? We did that in our uh, unit zero study. And if you need, just pick a starting point to get yourself orientated. And then, of course, graph it out. So I've got a few examples here, and I'd like you to follow this recipe to graph things out. Looking at number four, ooh, lots of brackets, but nonetheless a polynomial. Ooh, that's nice because I know the domain is all real numbers. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, can I reduce it? It already is. Any vertical asymptotes? No way. Any holes? No way. So let's find the x and y intercepts. The y intercept means let x equals 0. I think I get the point 0, comma 0. Uh, the x intercepts, though, ooh, there's a few of them. 0, 0, 1, 0, and negative 2, 0. Be careful about this one here. This is uh, power of 2 from our grade 12 days. Multiplicity of 2. So if I were to plot this out now, 0, 0, 1, 0, and negative 2, and be careful multiplicity of 2. I guess the last thing is the end behavior, and this really models a graph like y equals to what? x squared times x times x, x to the power of 4. So this is an even degree polynomial, so it looks like this. It starts up high, it ends up high. So it must start in quadrant 2, and then because this is multiplicity 2, it just touches, kisses, and whoop, turns back up. And then it must come back down, because it has to go through and cross 0, 0. And then it has to come back up, because it has to go through 1, 0, and just continues up, because it must end in quadrant 1. If you drew something like this, be proud of yourself, give yourself a pat on the back, and say, hooray, I should do some more. Turn the page. Five and six. Oh, just two more. Beautiful. All right. Um, I could do all these for you, but I know you're not going to learn. So I'd like you to actually try this yourself and then come back and double check your answer with mine. Please, please, please don't cheat and actually just continue the video. You really need to try this on your own. Got it? All right. See you in a bit. All right, I'm glad you're back. Uh, domain, I got these values. Can't be zero, can't be one, can't be three. Mm, now, I guess I should reduce first, That's right? So, goodbye, goodbye, maybe goodbye. And I'm left with, I think, x minus one on the top, or the numerator, x plus three to the power of three, also in the numerator an x and an x minus 3 all squared in the denominator. Interesting. So my vertical asymptotes, hmm, what's left over in my reduced denominator, so x equal to 0 and also x equals to 3. Now I'm going to graph this out right away. So vertical asymptote. Okay. Holes. Where are my holes? Well, they occur when x equals to 1. I have to find the y value. If I plug it into this reduced function, I think I get 0. 
Double check that for me, please. Uh -huh. So what? One comma zero. A hole. So don't quote that as an x-intercept, please, because it's actually a hole. So my x-intercept is not at 1, 0. I look at where y equals 0 I solve for x. So looking at this again, making the numerator equal to 0, I think I get negative 3 as an x-intercept. So another solid dot there. y-intercept, of course, is when you let x equal 0. So in this case, you can't because, look, domain. So there's no y intercept and then for the end behavior we're going to look at the highest powers right so i'm looking at a function here hmm, x to the power of four plus blah 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 right and then also x to the power of three plus blah 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 so really it equals to x so if you think about that i should start down low in quadrant three and end up high in quadrant one Knowing that then, friends, here we go. Let's take a look. If you graph something like this, starting quadrant three, going to three here, and you can go straight through, but wait, wait, wait. Did you see this degree three? That means it's multiplicity three. So multiplicity three doesn't really go straight through like that. There's a little bit of a curvature. It flattens out, and then it curves back up. Can't go like this because I can't cross the vertical asymptote. So hopefully you can get closer and closer like this. We know that at x equal to zero, it's an odd vertical asymptote, right? Single factor. So I know I start down here then. Opposite must come through to one. And then what happens at one? It goes through, but well, open dot. I guess it continues up. Whee! And then notice at 3, because I have a power of 2, this is an even asymptote. So if it's even, that means it starts up high and it also ends up high like this. And I know that the graph is supposed to end in quadrant 1, so I don't want to go down like this. And I know there's no other x-intercept, so it probably curves up somehow and goes like this. And if you graphed out something like this, bravo. And if you went to Desmos to check, you cheated. Well, that's not really cheating. I guess you're learning, so... You're using tools to learn. Okay. All right, let's do number six. I'm going to do it together with you. Number six is kind of weird, especially that root x squared. Remember what root x squared was from before? If you said the absolute value of x, I'm smiling. Good. So, domain here, of course, can't be zero. Uh, we're not simplifying anything, so that means our vertical asymptote is zero. Let me draw that in. Do, 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 do. Any holes? Nope, no factors that simplify. X-intercept? Yeah, that seems to be at negative 1, so negative 1, comma 0. Nice solid dot. Y-intercept? Uh-huh. Oh, wait a minute. No, because <laughs> X can't be 0. Now, the end behavior here, this is where it gets kind of tricky, because we have to split this up. We want to take a look at the behavior as x approaches to infinity. So you're really thinking about this. Aha, uh -huh, the limit as x approaches to infinity. Aha, uh aha, -huh, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh, of the function x plus 1 over root x squared. And that, hopefully you remember, is just the limit as x approaches to infinity of x plus 1 over x. And if you don't remember what that is, well, I'll tell you. It's equal to 1. So therefore, we have a horizontal asymptote by 1. So let's pretend this is 1. And do, 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 now, notice I didn't draw it on the left here either. Eh. Why not? Well, I didn't check that yet, did I? I just did the limit as x approaches to positive infinity. Let me double check negative infinity this time. And this is why that square root thing is funky. x plus 1 over this time negative x. And therefore, whoop, this equals to negative 1. Therefore, y equals to negative 1. Oh, ho! Two different horizontal asymptotes. Wow. So here it's up to you what you want to do. Do you really need a starting point? You could if you want. You don't really need to. But if you're like, I have no idea what the graph looks like, you know, you can choose something like negative 4, right? Because that's over here. So negative 4 plus 1 over root negative 4 squared. That's what? Negative 3 over 4. So you know it's like down here. 
which is good, then that means it probably gets closer to this asymptote. It has to go and cross here at the x-intercept. It probably shoots up because of the vertical asymptote. Is that vertical asymptote odd or even? Mm, x squared, even. So it must start up here, and then I guess it gets flatter like this. Now, if you weren't too sure about that either, you could have picked another starting point, let's say the number 1, right? I could have chose 1 and plugged it into the equation, so 1 plus 1 over root 1, that's 2 over 1, so I know that this point 1 comma 2 must be here, and I'm actually correct. Okay, that's it. Your turn to try.